Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Humanists podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, where I live with my boyfriend, our dog, our cat, and our rabbit. You can find me online as Tiny Humanists on Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, and YouTube, and I will have links to all of my social media and everything else that I talk about in the description box below if anything that I talk about catches your fancy and you want to see it further. Which I do have a few things that you might want to look at if you're interested in something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say one way or another. I have had too much caffeine and not enough social interaction today, so I'm feeling a bit wily. I think it's been about four weeks since my last episode, and I have simultaneously a lot and not a lot to show you. I feel like I should have had more finished, but it's just been a crazy busy few weeks. I have been trying to finish up all of the dyeing, winding, labeling, all of that for my update this Friday, August the 25th of August. At 1 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Savings Time. Forgive me. I'm having my MUCA update this Friday, <laughs> the 25th of August, and I've just been working on that just a ton just so much and it's pretty much ready now I've only got a few things that I have left to do which is pretty exciting I don't particularly like it when my updates end up being finished you know the day of so I'm pretty happy to have a few days leeway and um, it's supposed to actually be sunny this week so we might actually go outside the house and do something it's crazy as that as that is but um, yeah my Alphonse Mika update will be this Friday. Sorry, I'm repeating myself horribly. But um, I think I'll talk about it right at the top really quick because I've mentioned it so many times, but I do finally have the last colorway sorted, dyed, wound, and sample knitted. So I'll show you that really quick because that one will be my first finished object. But I'll quickly go through all of the colorways that are going to be in the shop. It is going to be an exclusively self-striping update. I do have a few things that are in the shop from like before, so they're sort of lingering, but there's four new colorways, all Alphonse Mika inspired, and I love them all. They're, some of them are kind of different from what I normally do, and I'm just, I'm just really excited by them. I really, really like them. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be all self-striping. I'm going to have 70 gram set sock set, so 50 grams of self-striping, 20 grams of the mini skein. 120 gram sets, 100 grams of the cell striping, 20 grams of the mini skein, and then I'm also going to be having DK weight sock set. So 100 grams of DK weight self striping, and then a DK mini to go with it. So those are all 100 grams plus a 20 gram mini for the DK, but there's going to be a handful of all of them. And I just, I think DK weight socks, it's kind of, I have to admit, this is kind of Jody Brown of uh, Grocery Girls speaking into my ear about DK weight socks because I've just one of the things that I don't really wear socks so the thought of DK weight socks is even worse for me than regular socks but also my cousin Jennifer has gotten into knitting socks and I think DK weight works really well for her because she doesn't have the time or energy I think to knit fingering weight socks so they go really fast anyway more information than needed I will go through the colorways that are going to be in the shop this one here is winter 1896 Again, based on Alphonse Mika paintings that are just divine. That's the, I have a weird order in my head. I don't know. This always always number one. No, I, no idea why. And then we have Summer 1896. They're actually from the same collection. And then we have the French one that is a beer advertisement that I um, refuse to say. <laughs> I don't want to insult my French speaking people here. This is actually hilariously my favorite, I think, out of the ones. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's so punchy. And then the last one, which is technically my first finished object for this episode, is fruits. And I believe I have, I don't know if I've shown this on the episode or podcast before, but it's based on this print. And this oops, is the colorway. And I am going to tell you right now, I don't know what happened on the day that I was dyeing the 100 gram skeins of this colorway, 
but every single 100 gram skein of this colorway is a factory second. So if you don't mind my factory seconds, and I know a lot of people don't, because they usually sell out immediately. If you like this color, or something at least close to it, there's a ton of factory seconds that are going to be in the shop for you. So, lucky you. But yeah, these are, I'll show you all of them together. These are all of the colorways that are gonna be going into the shop on Friday. And I'm pretty stinking chuffed. I really like them. This one is, has one of the main things for me is I need to finish a pair of socks before I know if I like them or not because these I was really humming and hawing over while I was knitting them. And now that it's finished and blocked and beautiful, I'm like, oh, I actually do like those socks. Okay. But yeah, that's what's going into the shop. Um, there's a lot. I knit, or I knit. I dyed a significant amount of each colorway, so I'm hoping it won't sell out and they'll actually, you know, be in the shop for a while for you to peruse at your leisure. But yeah, that was my first finished object to show you. And my second finished object is the Tamarack Sweater by Jessica McDonald. This is the pattern that I was knitting in my last episode. This is for my nephew Axton, who is two and a half. I knit the four-year-old size on a needle size smaller than what was recommended in the pattern just because I thought a smaller size wouldn't be too bad. And also I actually think I might have met Gage anyway, so he will grow into it and an oversized cardigan is fantastic on a small child. But um, yeah, I knit this because I didn't have any cardigans that I had made for him and he, I think he needs one. So I knit it out of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in the Amber Heather colorway. This is the worsted weight. It is a one by one broken rib, which is one of my favorite things to knit. And it's delightful. It's got a shawl collar that I actually had to knit one and a half times. <laughs> Not really, but I had finished the whole collar of this sweater. And this sweater is from the Woodland Ramble. I can't remember if I said that or not, but I'm planning on knitting my way through the Woodland Ramble book. And so, teaser, I have started the second sweater from that book that I'm going to be knitting. And I realized when I was knitting the second sweater that I had completely misunderstood the short row shaping in this sweater. So figuring it out for that one made me realize that I had done it wrong with this one. So I, I'm the type of person where if I realize I've made a mistake, I do have to finish it or fix it like immediately. Otherwise I will just let it sit. So I took this, I undid the shawl and, or the shawl collar and I, cause what I had realized what I had done is I hadn't put enough short rows in this. So it was quite a lot shorter in the back, which I thought it looked fine. Um, but I wanted it to be correct. So yeah, I undid the bind off and undid a few rows, picked up all the stitches again, and then just added in those extra short rows after the fact, and then redid the bind off and all of that. So, and I think it turned out just fine. And a surprise to people who may know me in real life, there's buttons on it. <laughs> so I made myself put on buttons because there was a day last week where I just spent, I think it was last Sunday, not this past one, but the one before, where I just took the day to finish a bunch of things that I needed to finish because there's, I, I don't usually take a long time to finish things, but sometimes the last little details get left. So I was just finishing up a few things that needed to be finished. And so I threw some buttons on there. I already had picked out the buttons, but yeah, there's something about putting on buttons that just, it's a block for me. It doesn't even matter what I'm making. It's just like the hardest part of it for some reason. I don't know why. But I am really, really happy with how this turned out. I think these are gonna look super cute. There's a good chance that they'll have to roll up the sleeves, but that is going to be absolutely fun because that'll look even cuter. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. I love the pattern. I love Jessica McDonald's patterns. And this does actually come in adult sizes as well. It has a different name, but I can't remember what it is. But all of the, the sweater patterns from the Woodland Ramble do have adult equivalents. So if any of these are ones that you like, they do come in your size. And Jessie McDonald is pretty passionate about size inclusivity. So she actually has proper sizing for her sweaters. But that is finished object number two.
and I'm really excited about that. And the box that I have a bunch of like child knits in is getting a little bit full, so I might have to actually mail out some things. Or there is a small chance that I might try to visit Alberta next month. I don't know. I don't quite know yet. My last finished object is one of the cutest things I've ever made, and I'm very excited. It was so much faster because it is a sewing garment. It was sewn garment. And this is for my niece Mira. And I think I mentioned before that because I had knit her this sweater, this is the Cathedral Sweater by Claudia, I can't remember her last name, Butter, wait. wait. Claudia Quintanella, it's from this Making Memories book. I'm sure you've all seen it before and are sick of it. But this is the sweater that I knit out of the Rowan Kid Classic that was sent to me by Unit Toronto for their Cathedral Knit Along. And I made her this. It's a size too big. I'm aware of that now. Looking at it now, I'm like, this is way too big. But I made this for her and I thought since it's white, I was really worried about it immediately getting covered in something. Food, dirt, whatever. And this yarn, I wouldn't say is like the easiest thing to clean um, because it's got the mohair content so you can't put it in the washing machine. But I figured what I would do instead is I would make her a pinafore to wear over top of it to just protect it a little bit. And that is what I did. And it is so cute. So this is what I made for her. This is a pattern by Oh Me Oh My Sewing. And I cannot remember what it was called because there's a couple different versions of pinafores that they have on the website. I bought it off of Etsy. But I will link in the description box below which one it was specifically. And I made the four-year-old size, which is kind of my standard for that group of kids that I have in my life right now, which is too big for them, but that's okay. And I made it out of some cotton Oxford canvas that I bought from uh, Daily Like Canada, which is also on Etsy. I have been buying fabric from them for quite a few years now, and their fabric is just fantastic. They make a lot of their own designs and like, they're all so cute. And this fabric is just delightful. It's got the perfect amount of like color distribution. And I just think it's so, so super cute. It is technically not the right fabric for this pattern because it is a little bit too thick for the gathering and the elastic that's added in the back. I did struggle a bit. Um, I think most of my struggles came from the fact that the first time around I sewed the skirt on backwards. But it's fine, whatever, I fixed it, it's great. But it's so super cute, got a nice hem, and so it's got a nice weight to it because it's a uh, canvas. But again, like if I make this again, I'll probably pick a lighter weight fabric. But another thing that's super great about this pattern is that there are only two seams in it that are exposed so you, the only seams that aren't like hidden away are the side seams in the skirt and everything else the seams are enclosed so i just think it's super neat super tidy super cute and i'm so excited to give it to her it's gonna look so sweet and i hope she can wear it for a few years and then just like over top things but the problem with it is that I made this to go over the cathedral sweater. That was my plan. But then I finished this one and hung it up in the same place as my tamarack sweater. So I saw these together and I just thought to myself that this would look so cute with a little red cardigan, a big chunky red cardigan because like this color would look great and I think it's absolutely adorable, but this is already going to someone. So I'm actually thinking of making, uh, there's a designer, they're on Instagram, they're all as Noel Knits, but they have designed this little oversized half fisherman's rib cardigan for children. And I just think it would look so cute over this. So if I get around to it, I'm going to be making her a little cardigan, card cardigan to go with out of this um, DK weight yarn of my own colorway. This is Hot Lavel. And I just think it'd be so cute. Or I might use this, or there's another colorway that I have in development right now that's really similar to the one darker berry on here. Oh, there's so many colors on here that I can use, but I want it to be like dark and ready color and just like so 
and so that's uh yeah i did tell mira's mom Brittany, that if she ever gets sick of me sending things all the time that i've made just to let me know and she said uh, never <laughs> so i know she appreciates what i send because she's also the one who got the um the rosa tea and the uh the overalls as a set and I got it sent to picture and it was so cute. But yeah, I'm, um, I am I just really, really like kids clothes because they're so satisfying and I get to use a lot of yarn that I bought weird amounts of. It's satisfying. But those are my finished objects. And I do have plans to make, because I've got also a weird, when I first started sewing, I was also buying weird amounts of fabric that won't like really make anything for myself. So I really want to make more of these types of garments that can be just chucked in the wash, like overalls and little shirts and jackets and stuff. And I really want to do that just because it would be great practice for me as well to make my own clothes, just to get a little bit more comfortable with just how things go together so that when I actually get around to actually sewing together some of the patterns that I have cut out already, it won't take me as much mental space to, to get through that. You know. So, moving on to works in progress. I have one that's left over from last time, and that is my Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. And I have done like a few rows in this. It's still not even at the point where I have joined in the round. It's still knit back and forth. I have no, it's not that I don't have a desire to knit this, is that it doesn't have to be finished anytime soon. And honestly, I think the thing that's going to get me to finish this the fastest is probably the fact that I'm knitting this on 3.25 millimeter needles and I only have one set of this size and it is the exact set that I'm going to need for the color work vest that I want to make for my boyfriend Jason and as soon as I get to the point where I want to make that I'll probably finish this just so I can get the needles off of it because I don't like things sitting on on waste yarn I'd rather just finish them to clear off the needles but honestly I think yeah when I get around to wanting to make that that's when that's going to get finished so I can move on to the other thing <laughs> that's the way my brain works anyway that's how I finished sweaters in the past but my second work in progress is new from last time, and it is the second sweater from the Woodland Ramble book. I'm sorry, my hair is absolutely covering everything. I could be a wig shop if I really wanted to. So yes, the second pattern that I'm knitting from the Woodland Ramble book is the Ponderosa sweater, and this is how far I am. And this is honestly it's really fun i am knitting this out of um baroco vintage which is a acrylic wool and nylon blend it is machine washable which is why i bought it i normally wouldn't be knitting anything out of an acrylic yarn not that i think you can't i absolutely like this is so useful for people with children this is for a child I just, um, color work and acrylic yarn don't really go together that well for me because I do get a bit sloppy. I don't know. Um, but I'm actually really, really happy with how this has turned out so far. I think it's going to even out a little bit with blocking, but like, it's pretty even because this yarn is very round and very smooth. So color work is not the ideal use for a yarn like this. Usually with color work you want to do something a little bit more fuzzy, a little bit um, more rustic to actually be able to stick to the other stitches. You know, that thing. But yeah, I'm really happy with this, how this is turning out, especially since there are a few rows in here that have three colors. I'm actually quite happy with how those have turned out. But I am knitting the 10 year old size. It is for my niece Bronwyn and she is going to be eight in January. So I wanted it to be too big for her, hopefully. My sister has quite large children, like quite tall. So hopefully this will fit her for at least a little while. But uh, yeah, I think I'm really happy with these colors as well. They turned out a lot better than I expected them to, but yeah. I'm just working on the first sleeve now and then I will pick up and knit the second sleeve after and this honestly this will take me like a day or two more 
If I actually sat down and did it, I could finish it today, but we'll see when I actually get the chance. But yeah, I really like it. I think it's really cute. So I'm gonna have enough yarn left over from this project to knit the hat at least in the Woodland Ramble collection. And then hopefully if I have enough left over even after that, I'm gonna be knitting the mittens as well. Just because I don't want any leftovers of this yarn because it's not something I'm gonna be really be able to use um, after. And I just, I love the idea of a matching set of things, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna have at least 50 grams, I think, of this left over, and then I've got the leftovers of the white and the cream up there, and there's plenty of that left as well. But that is going to be finished soon, and then the one I'm gonna be knitting after that isn't actually in the Woodland Ramble book, because the only other colorwork sweater in the Woodland Ramble book is in sport weight, and I have yarn for that, but it's going to be for a different child. Um, and I wanted both uh, Bronwyn and her twin brother, Arthur, to have colorwork sweaters. So I'm going to be knitting the little Ruska instead. And the colors I'm going to be using for that is this gray is going to be the main color. And then these two are going to be the contrast. And I think that's going to be super fun too. Just because I want them to sort of have a matching style, pardon me, of sweater, even if they're not like the same pattern. So I'll probably wind those up next week. No, I mean, no, it's Monday, <laughs> this week, and hopefully I'll be able to get that started, although there is a sweater that is living in my brain that needs to be put into the real world, and it's going to be glorious. I'm going to be copying a sweater from a Halloween video that I saw last year, and I'm going to be using the Tin Can Knits uh, Strange Brew for it. I've already got all my colorways, and I've already done a gauge swatch. My gauge is perfect, so I'm going to cast it on soon. I just need to actually plan it out, but that I'd like to say other things need to be finished before I can make that, that I might just decide to take a little staycation and just knit that and have a good time. But I have one other project that I'm working on at the moment, and this is for my friend Rowan, who is, he's like, I think the closest thing I can think of is like, when I think of him, I think of like Radagast from the Hobbit movies which I'm not a fan of, but I really liked Radagast. He's just like a nature-loving, kind soul. He's delightful. Anyway, I've wanted to make him something for a really long time, and I was trying to figure out between whether I wanted to make him the Moby sweater or the um, Hugo, and I decided to go for the Hugo because I liked it just in general a little bit more. I'm going to make some tweaks with the neckline and stuff, but it is a pattern by Veronica Avery, and it is published through Brooklyn Tweed. And here I am, so far. It is a seamed garment, and this is the back piece. I haven't been able to work on it that much just because I do have a lot of other stuff that I am working on, but I'm hoping to get to this, and I don't think it'll actually take that long because it is Aran weight on 4.5 millimeter needles. It is for a man who is over six feet tall and quite broad, but still I have not, you know, I don't struggle with that. But big size is great. It gets a lot of yarn out of my stash. But it is most like, it's got a double moss stitch and then the cabling and it's just delightful. It's quite subtle, but it's still like, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But uh, I'm knitting this out of Knit Picks Simply Wool Erin and it smells like a sheep farm, a hundred percent. I don't have anything else in my stash that smells this sheepy. It's delightful. But yeah, I don't know if any of you will remember, but I was doing gauge swatching for the sweater and I was struggling really bad and trying to decide if I needed to do a different size with a different needle and do a bunch of math and what all this is going to do. Did I need to hold different yarns together? Um, yeah, it turned out that I was actually using the wrong yarn to do a gauge swatch in, and I was using the yarn that was for my Ponderosa sweater instead by accident. <clears throat> it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that that is what was happening. Um, so yeah, I decided to actually gauge swatch with the yarn in question, and my gauge is perfect. <laughs> so I didn't have to do any math, I didn't have to do any of that other stuff, so I felt a bit silly, not gonna lie. But I'm really enjoying this. It's very, very easy to follow as a pattern. It's 
you can memorize it immediately just because there's such a basic structure to the lattice work and like it's very simple and I'm really really enjoying it and yeah it's it's rustic wool so I can spit splice and all of that so I'm having a really good time with that but it's just not a priority I do want it to be done before Christmas but it's um it's something that can wait if I needed to but yeah and the only other thing I'm working on besides that are DK weight sock samples because I do have all of my um my muca colors in the DK weight here I don't know if you'll be able to tell but I haven't really done a lot but I do like having samples of things just because I know it's easier to, um, you know, you don't have to figure out what it's going to look like. So like I've got one sock ready and I'm probably just going to do one sock of each colorway just because I can finish them later and visually you can see, but like, yeah, this is the summer 1896 colorway on DK and these go fast, so fast. It's actually a little ridiculous. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I used uh, the Crazy Sock Ladies free DK weight vanilla sock for the basics. And honestly, I could have done without because it's it's genuinely just like the basic sock recipe that I use with just the numbers from the DK weight. So it's really easy to figure out. But yeah, that's what this is. And I know what my next one will have like a few tweaks in it. So I know what to do for that as well. But yeah good time takes like no time at all but I just need to finish the other ones because you know you gotta anyway that is everything that I'm working on at the moment I've also got like I'm still working on my quilts I have worked a little bit on my Christmas quilt and then I cut out another one because I'm like that love prep work apparently I love to cut out quilts and then just let them sit there forever but it's, I'll get to it eventually. I'm going to try and actually take like a little bit more rest time over the next little while. We'll see if that actually happens because I have a lot of, um, I've got a lot of new colorways coming in the pipeline here. Actually, I'll show you one. Uh, this was sort of funny. I had someone message me on, well, they tagged me on an, uh, a story in on Instagram about the, okay, so I'm sure some of you are Taylor Swift fans. And she recently announced that she was releasing her 1989 album Taylor's version in October. And there was a picture that was released for her like limited edition vinyl of that album, I think. I'm not a Swifty, I apologize. But they tagged me to picture of that album where Taylor Swift is wearing a sweater on the beach. And they <laughs> requested that I make a sock based on that colorway and I'll, I'll put a picture here of what the album cover looks like and uh that's it's that's what i've done um this is what i've done <laughs> so if you're interested i don't know let me know i think i might put a few of these in the shop not a lot if there's not a lot of you know interest in it but yeah i might put a few of these um in the shop later on this year but yeah i've got i <laughs> I have seven sock samples on the needles right now. It's a bit silly, but I've been having a lot of fun developing new colorways because the problem with developing new colorways is new colorways develop new colorways and so on and so forth. So it's a good time. That's enough though, I think. So I will see you again next time, hopefully with some more just more clean slatey type things, or maybe I'll just have worked on one sweater the whole time. I have no idea. But uh, just a reminder, my update is on August 25th at 1 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Savings Time. And uh, yeah, I will see you in my next episode and I hope you all have a, a lovely rest of your week. Goodbye.